Hello and welcome to a fairly in-depth tutorial video on how to use the new workflows in VBS 4 21.1. New users will notice that there is a second training tab and we're going to look at how that works, as well as the process of creating new single player training missions that will appear here in this list for your trainees. Then we're going to look at different network architectures that are available in 21.1. You still have the dedicated server on the VBS world server, but now you can also create non-dedicated servers on any client PC. Before we get into the new workflows in VBS 4 21.1, it's worth quickly revisiting the concept of the VBS world server. Now this is an optional capability, but it's very useful. The VBS world server will run on a separate PC on your local area network and connect to your VBS 4 clients. It does two important functions. First off, it is a central repository for your terrain and battle spaces, and it also supports networking. It provides a dedicated server as a service that's available automatically for you to use. On my local area network here, I'm running the VBS World Server on a separate computer. I've already started it up, but we can quickly check its status by running the status executable. It's running here on this separate PC, and we can also see that in the Data Battle Spaces folder, there are currently no battle spaces stored on the VBS World Server. Let's just have a quick refresher now of how we interact with the world server from a VBS4 client. This is the VBS4 launcher that you'll typically use to start a VBS4 client, and you can see here that we have different tabs for different configurations. To start a client, you'll have the client tab selected, and you're going to select either VBS4 online, which means that you'll be connected to the world server, or offline, which means that you won't. In this case, we're going to connect to the world server PC it should automatically refresh in this drop-down box. We're going to select some other options here as needed and we're going to launch modules. VBS4 is started and we're connected to the world server and that's indicated here by the world server status. You can see this green tick. If there were battle spaces on the world server, we'd see them listed here in addition to any battle spaces that we have locally. Now we've started VBS in administrator mode, so we see both battle spaces and training tabs. But if we were a trainee, we'd only see training. We'll have a look at this a little bit later on. From here, we can actually connect to a server. For example, here we can see the dedicated server that I spoke about earlier running on the world server. Now we'll just create a random battle space in a random location on Earth. We'll type in the name of the random battle space here. Now that the battle space is saved, it's located only on the local PC, and we can see that here because of the option to upload the battle space to the VBS world server. We can simply go back to Launcher, and we can actually click Open Battle Spaces folder here, and we can see that our random battle space is located here on this PC. If I upload that now to VBS world server, we'll get a warning message because we're going to be uploading from our local PC to the world server. This will just take a couple of seconds. And now the battle space upload is complete. Now if we go to our world server PC, we can see that our random battle space has been uploaded here to the world server so that any other VBS4 clients that connect to this world server will be able to download and use this battle space. Another addition in the 21.1 workflow is the addition of single player training missions. And you'll see those here once you create them. Creating them is very easy. When you create a new battle space, and we'll just give it a random name, Battle Space 2, you'll see this option for available as a single player training mission. If we select that and save changes, we'll see that Battle Space 2 is available here in the Battle Spaces list, and also here as a single player mission. Once we add units to that, we'll be able to execute. We'll quickly add a playable unit now to the battle space by using the editor. I'm just gonna add a single playable unit in this scenario. And I'm going to close and save so we can actually host the mission here as an administrator, or we can go to training and execute this mission as a player. What we're going to do now is close down VBS4, restart as a trainee, and have a look at what that looks like. To start VBS4 as a trainee, all you need to do is unselect admin in the launcher, 
and we'll go ahead now and launch VBS4 once again. VBS4 has now loaded and you can see that we're still connected to the VBS world server, but all the user can see is the training tab. We don't have administrator privileges. From here, we can go ahead and execute the single player training mission. For example, if this was a training mission showing the user how to use VBS4, this is where you would put it. So we can click on execute and after a few seconds, you can see that we're in the middle of this desert in this single player training scenario. We'll exit out of this for now, and you can also see that we can connect to a server from here as well. This means that a trainee can connect to the dedicated server on the VBS World server if needed, and of course we can upload single player battle spaces like Battlespace 2 here to the world server as well. You do that by clicking on the same icon, then you acknowledge the upload, and after a few seconds the battle space will upload to the world server. If we actually switch over to the world server PC, we can see that it's been uploaded and it's now possible to see that battle space on all trainee stations. Over here on the right, we have a second client PC where we're going to load up VBS4 as a trainee and we'll be able to see that battle space in the list. Let's do that now. VBS4 is loaded here on the right in trainee mode. And as you can see, we don't see the battle space tab like we do over here when we're the administrator and the trainee computer here will automatically download the battle space the first time you click on execute. The scenario will start immediately, and here we are in the middle of the desert. That's a basic overview of how we can use the VBS world server and the new workflow to create and distribute single player training scenarios. Now we're going to have a look at different network architectures that are possible with VBS 4 21.1. The first two will be offline network architectures, which means that there's no VBS world server in the loop. These are the same as the ways that you can network VBS3. The second three are online network architectures. Online means that we're connected to a VBS world server. The first network architecture is arguably the simplest, where we have a VBS4 client acting as a server. We would call this a non-dedicated server. Let's have a look at this in game. So starting off here with our VBS launches, we can see that we have got the offline mode checked for both clients. We'll start VBS4 on both computers now. Here we are with VBS4 loaded on two client PCs, PC1 and PC2. These are two different computers on my local area network. Now we're going to quickly create a battle space. We'll do this in Fort Hood. You can see that we're not connected to the VBS world server. We'll zoom in here and I'm going to fast forward time just to move the video along. We'll create a battle space and then we'll edit it and place down two playable units. Then we'll exit back to the main menu and save. We can now host this battle space by clicking the host button and this is new to VBS4 21.1. It will immediately create a multiplayer session that any client on the network can connect to. Finally, here we are assigning playable roles and starting the training scenario. The second network architecture uses a dedicated server instead of a non-dedicated or client server, and you'll set this up in the VBS launcher. Let's have a look at that right now. Here we have our two launchers once again, but this time we're going to go to server and we're going to select VBS4 offline dedicated server. That will add the dash server parameter to the, co to the command line, and we can now start up VBS4 on both clients. We've got the client started up now on the right and the server on the left. The client can now connect to the server. You'll see the dedicated server in the list as shown. We can connect to the server and then proceed as normal. Finally, we're selecting the specific battle space on the dedicated server and assigning a playable unit and kicking off the mission. Now we're moving into the online architectures, where online means that we're connected to a VBS world server on all of the VBS4 clients. The first one we're going to look at is using the world server, but using a separate non-dedicated server running on a VBS4 client. You can see that the terrain and battle spaces will still be provided by and stored on the VBS world server, but networking will be managed by the non-dedicated server. Let's have a look at this example in game. On screen, you can see two VBS clients on two separate PCs. Both of these clients are running as administrators 
and that's why we can see both the battle spaces and training tabs. Both are connected to a VBS world server and you can see the world server icon to the right of the search bar with the green tick. This means we're connected or online. The first thing we're going to do here is host a non-dedicated session, just like we did in the offline mode. You would go through the same process. Under Execute, you would click on the battle space and click Host, and that will create the server, and then you can assign roles. On the client, you can connect to the server, and you find the correct server in this list. You can also see a VBS World Server server there, but we'll all ignore that for now. We finish assigning roles, and then of course, just kick off the scenario. The next network architecture is one that is hosted by the VBS4 dedicated server on the VBS World Server. As you can see on screen, the VBS World Server dedicated server will handle the networking while the World Server itself will still manage terrain and battle spaces. Let's look at this in-game now. We start with our two VBS4 launcher instances on two PCs and we'll point to the VBS World Server that we wish to connect to. Obviously, we will select VBS4 online. You'll see the IP address there in the command line parameter and we can start up VBS4 on both PCs. VBS4 is now started and we have two admin clients running. We can upload battle spaces to the world server or download them from the world server using the icons that you can see here. We're going to go ahead now and we're going to upload the Fort Hood scenario to the world server. There will be a confirmation dialog and we just click Upload. This will overwrite whatever existing battle space may have existed there. We can see that the upload is now complete. Now we can go ahead and connect to the dedicated server on the world server. We'll just pause here for a second on this screen because it's very important. You'll see a list of different servers that you can connect to and the one that you can see highlighted is the one that's running on the world server. Now we can click Connect and we're at another very important screen. This one shows us all of the battle spaces that are both on our local PC and on the world server. We can select the battle space that we want to execute for this network session. And the reason we can see the local variant of the Fort Hood battle space is because the system allows us to upload local battle spaces from here as well. If we were to select that first Fort Hood battle space, it would give us the option to upload and then we could execute that one from the world server instead. Now we can select the battle space that we actually want to launch, and of course that's going to be the Fort Hood that's already on the world server. It will download from the world server to this local PC, and then we can start allocating players to slots. We can connect other clients to the battle space, and of course go ahead and execute. Finally, Let's have a look at the third type of online network architecture, which is a standalone VBS dedicated server connected to a couple of VBS4 clients, all of which will be connected back to the world server. As you can see on this diagram, the VBS dedicated server is handling the networking and the world server, as always, handles the terrain distribution and the battle spaces. Starting again with our VBS4 launches, this time on the one on the left, we're going to start an online dedicated server connected to the same world server. You can see the dash server command line parameter there uh, and also the IP address of the world server. Now we can launch VBS4 as normal. VBS4 has started once again and we can connect to our new dedicated server right here in the client. Now we've connected and we can choose our battle space. Once again, we can execute battle spaces from the world server on the chosen dedicated server but in this case, we're going to run the same Fort Hood mission that we've been using, assign playable slots, and kick off the scenario. That brings us to the end of this tutorial video. Of course, there is a ton more information in the VBS4 documentation on VBS4 deployment options, and don't hesitate to contact us at support at bisimulations.com if you have any questions. Thank you.